Okay, so we found Sani, everybody. Oh my goodness. It's so lovely to have you here. Hello. So the yeah, connection well, might be a bit... <laughs> bit time lucky. The connection might be a bit... Yes, exactly. The connection might be a bit slow, everybody. So we're going to do it in a kind of gapped space. Um, but... Um, I'm Nadine Benjamin and I'm the Intuitive Verdi Soprano. I'm a certified NLP mind coach, a certified high performance coach, and I'm a professional opera singer. And I love singing all over the world. One of the wonderful things I love is connecting, championing, and celebrating people. And to, this morning we get to celebrate Sani Miliao Masaili. And he will say that whether I've said that right or not, because I, it's a wonderful name. And he will say it again for me at, when, when, we, when we get to speak to him. So he is a London-based layered art exponent. He has appeared in opera and most forms of music, theatre, film, radio and television in many parts of the world. He studied singing at the Queensland Conservatorium of Music, Australia, where he gained his BMAS and postgraduate diploma. In 2011, Sani co-founded the Nyafa Arts Collective, London's first Samoan arts collective. He's the creative director and the producer. So hi, Sani. Hi, Nadine. Hi, world. Good going on my name too. <laughs> so as I say every morning. <laughs> oh, thank you for correcting me. It's great. <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful name. Thank you for attempting it with all your heart. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> So, as I say every morning, Sani and I, neither, neither of us are um, medical doctors or psychiatrists. So, if you need that, please, please, please go and seek it. And, um, yeah, we really, 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 really encourage it. And if you know someone who's who wouldn't do it, but you know that you can support them, please pick up the phone to them. Okay? So, um, Susan, as I can see that you're there, if you can tell us what the what it's like as a listener for you hearing, that would be really helpful to both Sani and I. I'm going to give him space to answer these questions, but we don't know how big the delay is. So if you could let us know, that would be wonderful. So, Sani, lovely to have you here. Thank you. Lovely to be here. <laughs> so what inspires you to write what inspires me to write uh stuff that makes that moves me so it could be some story in the paper that has to do with some injustice or it could be some historical thing that is i've read about years ago and it's just been sort of like percolating in my being um or it could you most of the stuff that i've written have come from outside about the, the socio-political situation that i'm currently in or that i know of from an earlier epoch yeah so life life because long story short life inspires me to write <laughs> So I noticed that in your productions, you tend to amalgamate quite a lot of traditional opera and then put a kind of modern day stint on them. I, I mean, I, I totally identify with that because that's what everybody can kind of does, but you yeah. do it in a different way. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, um, I. it depends on the piece. The last piece that we did was Rotello, the rugby opera. So the R stands for rugby. And I brought together um, Otello by Verdi, Carmen Bizet, and Tosca by Puccini. And I put them all in the same opera. Um, 
with they all met at the Rugby World Cup, and it was about domestic. You've done a very similar piece to this about the domestic violence in 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 opera, how um, the misogyny, and also I equated that to how domestic violence rates rise during um, great sporting events. So we, uh, yeah. So I I wrote a script, and that that was the narrative, and it was just it was you know facing us making society look at itself as, as art was supposed to do or I, I attempted to do and um and just looking at the the great the great works from a, from a different perspective and i also put in pacific culture from because i'm from samoa otherwise known as samoa but it's you pronounce samoa so there's elements everything that i do with this company the Nafa arts collective has a pacific samoan stroke you know uh, bent to it yeah that's amazing that's really amazing and also um you're talking about domestic violence you know in this experience that we're having now there is a huge rise yeah. in domestic violence for women and for men uh, yeah uh, so it's amazing yeah. how that's been highlighted in operas but obviously at the same time, we're actually going through that right now. Yes, that, that's right. And, um, you know, because quite often you look at these uh, high art forms and they're based on, on people. You tend to forget that when the orchestra, the big costumes and the lights and language. the stories are human stories and the stories that are relevant today and they're, 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 as, as horrible as they are they're still it's still happening you know so that is why i felt compelled i often feel compelled to write that are within me you know right some people can't stand updating things mm. we kept every, the, the music traditional yeah. we used the stories but yeah it was great yeah so um, Hugh Clifford is just saying good morning from Derry City Island. Morning, Hugh. Nice. <laughs> so how does singing influence your work? Uh, well, uh, well, you know, I'm a singer first. It's all I've ever wanted to do. Doesn't matter what I'm singing, I just love it. Um, and then I was you know, singing choirs and then nightclubs and bands and then music theater and then opera. So singing inspires the work that I do. A lot of the work that I write, I write, I compose as well. So I've, I've written musicals and I've written, you know, as well as plays. So I, everything that I, I come from the, 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 my background is, is, is singing. So everything that I do has some form of singing in it. Play that I wrote about, the refugees coming to Australia um, that had some musical element in it. And I don't think you can fully get away from from background, even you know, even though some of the topics I uh, tackle tend to be um, quite heavy. But yeah, uh, singing is, is 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 life. It's breathing. It's it, it's communicates through you know through through voice. Yeah. So that's how singing influences me. I mean, I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, because we've got this delay. It's I'm, I'm, it's very it's it's where I think we're dealing with this brilliantly. <laughs> I know the little gap. <laughs> I know. So tell me, in terms of artists in creation eight, this Nafa Naf Nafa Nafa Arts Collective. Could you tell me Nafa, how it started good, Nafa, and yes. what why the <laughs> and how and, and and yeah, how it started and what's behind it all? Okay, Nafa is a Samoan word which means genealogy or connection. And um, I was living in London at 20, well, for ages, and in 2012, 
there was uh, the independence movement uh, celebration of Samoa turning 50, 50 years of independence. So I thought, well, we should do something because it's, it's 50 years of independence and I'd, I'd like to do something. Um, so I got a lot of my friends and colleagues together from New Zealand and from the Pacific, Stella Duffy, Rosanna Red, and everybody called together. We got together and we just thought, okay, what are we going to do? And we came up with this piece of history. I called it a layered art experience because it had film, poetry, a spoken word, Pacific dance, opera, um, like everything. And this is it here. This is the inaugural piece that we did. And I just, it was like a time, it was a, the audience moved around the space. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, after that, it was it was huge. It was, it was massive. I must have been about 30 in the cast and we did it all on a nothing budget. But, you know, with uh, with a lot of love and uh, quality was the main thing. I always wanted, you know, to have the quality of the works. So I got in really good people in and um, with with good spirits, you know, people because you can get some people who are good and they're not so good to work with, but I just make sure that I have people who are good to work with and who are good at their craft. And also it's community-based too, so we also invite different people to come in to work with us. And, and it was, we did that, and then I thought, someone said to me, because it was a one-nighter, and I, then someone said, wow, all that work just for one night. <laughs> and I thought, oh, maybe you're right. So we did it again the following year, did a festival, then I decided, oh, I can write this, maybe I can write something else, I wrote a musical. And then I just started bringing out all the stuff that I'd learned over the years as an opera singer, or the repertoire that I've come to love, and just bring it forward and, and creating pieces that people can relate to. Because music is great, but you can sometimes get lost lost in the grandeur or lost lost in the music if you like so um i just want a bit more sensibility that you can actually come to an opera or to a piece and get something out out of it not just the oh just, you can get a lot out of it but a different view on it and of course because i'm Samoan, i put a lot of my own culture into the works that i do so we've been going now for seven eight years now and uh we just do and ambitious things, you know. We started off with the piano, and now we've got orchestras. We did a Siegfried last year, um, and it was great to cast people who had been learning the roles but had never had an opportunity to, you know, everybody can who had opportunities to to perform it, you know. Um, so we had and great singers, you know, great performers yeah. like Gwen and Rand and um, uh, Freddie Tong, yeah. great, you know, the great people, and it was great yeah. to be around it and to see them fly and. Put a bit of Pacific in there using the Samoan knife dance as Siegfried's Nautum. So, you know, making it relevant to my life and to my experience as a Samoan living in London, singing in a different language and a different culture and, and surviving. <laughs> Scraping. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that was a lot. I can, you know, I can't even remember half my, my answers, but okay. <laughs> no, I, I really identify um, with you in the sense of, you know, you were just talking about as artists, we create these company, companies and we're talking about having really great artists to work with. And for me, the same thing with my company, Everybody Can. The first yeah. thing that I'm looking for is that you're a great colleague. I want you to be great at your craft. <laughs> But the first proviso that I'm looking for is that you are a great colleague. Right. When you're you're working under the constraints that we are, which is the you know budgets that are very small, and yeah. time frames that are quite small as well. There yeah. is just no time to entertain um, um, that kind Definitely. of behaviour, and you really need to uh, be able to have something. Yes, where the audience feels that um, they they are connected to it too, and the only way that they're connected to it is if you've got really great people on stage, you know. Yeah, yeah. And coming back to the audience, your audience is quite like like my audience is very varied. Could you tell us a little bit about your audience? Yes, we we had, like the, I read a play called Taloon, and that was about the, this boat that brought the flu, the 1918 Spanish flu, for want of a better description, to Samoa. And it killed 
25% of our population, right? So the pandemic that is happening now, I'd written about the one hundred years ago. So everything that's happening now was in my play, in isolation, um, people dying without seeing relatives, and it was you know, so that play was on in New Zealand House in London. First time the plays ever been performed there. So the audience there was a cross section of Samoans, Kiwis, and New Zealanders. Um, Londoners who wanted to, because the story hasn't really been um, told as such, you know. So that's that audience. Then we have the for the Siegfried audience, the audience for that was more, more Wagner um, people who love Wagner and know the story. But then we also had people who'd never heard of Wagner, but know that what we do with our pieces has a bit of um, a different flair to it. So they came along and they'd come along to and the rugby opera people came to because. It was, was rugby it still had the three operas in it and the, the, there was a, the age groups of that which just so varied it was great to see and diverse as diverse because our company we it, we you know we as blind, i guess you call it blind casting you know but we just have different racial groups in it and i love that i love it you know so um yeah. who, who, but who, you know who can obviously do the job yeah <laughs> So the audiences were different ages. It's great to see young, as well as yeah. the usual opera crowds. You know the, the different the different types of crowds that come. So each piece brings a different a different crowd. But the the rugby opera was was yeah. great because we first time we did it was in a gymnasium. So people don't feel threatened about going to the opera. It was on an estate, so we had people from the estate in. Um, yeah, it's not that old. Well, we did it there, but it's just the fact that and and it was because it fitted with the piece. As, an, as a rugby piece, we're going to do it in, um, you know, in the uh, in the gymnasium. The Tulum was a New Zealand boat, so we did it at New Zealand House. So, so we're building a um, uh, a what's, what's the word? building an audience. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just think it's really wonderful because I've seen some of your audience responses. And so, and you know, and it is really interesting that when you have such diverse casting on stage, or you know, just people from different cultures and different backgrounds, that you yeah. do draw in such a wide and varied audience. And it's so wonderful to see that. And I, I know that it creates a, a really, I don't know, it's just, it creates a kind of different experience for everybody. But I also yeah. hear that your Siegfried in particular, you singing Siegfried was a great success also. Thank God. <laughs> that was like, thank you. <laughs> it ain't an easy thing. It's not singing happy birthday for two hours. It's not singing happy birthday for a year, nonstop. Yeah, it was, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, that was a mountain so, that I climbed because. So, so we had. <laughs> Sorry, please tell us about the mountain you climbed. Sorry, I, 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 there was a delay there. No, yeah, um, I, I worked on Siegfried assiduously for nonstop for two years, at, at, you know, like just learning the role. Um, and then things didn't go quite as I planned. And there was a lot of things that went on and it actually caused me to stop singing. It was so intense that, yeah, you know, so that was a wow. long time ago. Yeah. It was it was it was an interest, interesting time, and um, yeah. but Nadine, I stuck with it. I just rolled back, you know, worked my way, you know, all the demons yeah. that had come to it. Yeah. yeah, it got so bad. I just I couldn't I couldn't I just couldn't anymore. And it took me a long time, but I worked through it, and we it culminated last year to a, a, a great great piece with the Virgin of Sinfonia, Stephen Anthony Brown conducting, great, it was great, great. So, um, and I, you know, just yeah. loving putting stuff on, having the guts to go, okay, I've learned this role, <laughs> I'm gonna put it on, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And is, is, is yeah. that ego? Yeah. You know, so it's more like, okay, well, this is the piece that is rarely performed, you know, which is great because people feel they don't have yeah. the resources. 
you know, but you find it, you know, you, you find it, you know, you, like they say, say yes and learn how to do it later. But I've just, I just know that if you want to do something, you're going to do it. Yeah. You know, you know. and if you don't want to do it, you won't do yeah. it. It's, it's I mean, I, I had this, I had a similar, no, yeah, yeah, I had a similar experience with Otello. Um, and yeah. um, I always wanted to sing Desdemona because yeah. I'm a Verdi obsessive. And um, I got told on numerous occasions, why would you learn Desdemona? You'll never sing it. Why are you learning Desdemona? You'll never sing it. Wow. I was, I was like, okay, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I so, that's why everybody everybody yeah. can tell us. So you know, it's the same thing. yeah, it's it's <laughs> arduous because you know those those voices so, they, they, um, still, they still exist, don't they? But you gotta just and just believe and believe and believe and believe. And, believe, yeah. You know? and yeah, we yeah we all we all have those uh, niggly, niggling yes. niggles. Yeah. Yes. So we had we you and I had a, a really amazing experience with um which we didn't tap on at the beginning, which we would normally do. Um Porgy and Bess. Tell me about that. Ah. Like, because I know for me it was it was incredible to meet artists such as yourself and to feel like we were in this found this kind of new family that you know half of us didn't even know existed you know and it was just such a, a gracious and wonderful and exciting experience i mean how was that for you i loved it i loved it i loved it i loved it it was one of the highlights of my life so far professional and personal the people on that boat on that both go to New York were just are just the kindest, most <laughs> bloody. I tell you what, I <laughs> I was in the ensemble. Every tenor next to me, they could have been like Pavarotti or you know Domingo or Tito Skipa. The voices were incredible and beautiful hearts, and we just got on so well. Ian, they were great. They were really good. You know, they were uh, like. At the top, and they're even looking after the people now. But you know, Michelle and Martin, and oh gosh, it was it was great. It was yeah, and I made some lifelong, as you know, say lifelong friends. But I have, and I was in the different cultures, South Africans, um, yeah. um, just hearing their stories yeah. about their homeland, and then just the the joie de vivre and the singing, the singing. Uh, you know, the Americans, I mean, gosh, and then us, and then yeah. you guys, you know, it was just bringing the different cultures together and um, working on that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful piece. You know, it was just, it was awe inspiring. And um, uh, my yeah. whole, you know, I was so happy to get that gig anyway. And, you know, before every gig, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. what's going to be like? But it, was, yeah. it was, it was beyond. And it just set me on a different path vocally. Because I had to work extra, I had to work harder to, you know, to keep my standard yeah. up. And when you're around great people, you, you become better. Yeah. You, you know, you, you know, and you know, you don't want to be the one that's like, oh, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you, universe. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, can I crush any more? That, that's enough. So tell me, what what's next? Yeah, no, so what's next for Nyafa Art Collective? Um, well, we were okay. This week we're supposed to be doing Siegfried, <laughs> but wow. COVID smoked us out. Yeah, on this the 30th, it was this it was this weekend, and also the week just before we, was my yeah. musical for kids, Bob of the Bad Baboon, that was supposed to be happening now. So I would have been rehearsing it. So right now, I'm just weighing things up. So, you know, we're just going to put things in the back burner. I've got other projects that I've planned for the year, but we'll just we'll just see. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. So we're just looking at what um, what yeah. is possible, you know, what is possible. So I maybe, think this maybe is Maybe everybody can have that up. 
do something. Yeah, because we, we were going to have lunch. I remember a couple of years ago, you said, <laughs> just have lunch. But I was going to the pool, you know, and it's just never. And then, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. But yeah, it was, yeah. this whole time has been reflection, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. You know, it's been, um, you know, looking at life choices and things. So I've, just, yeah. I've been doing that too, doing this lockdown, lock up, lockdown, yeah. lock up. Yeah. 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 So, um, uh, could you give three tips for anyone that's wanting to start their own company or could you give any uh, anybody some tips around that? Uh, if you want to start your own company, you've got to really want to do it. Um, decide uh, and go for it. You need, you need uh, we took it earlier, you need, my top yeah. tips are guts. You've got to have the guts to do it. You know, have the chutzpah to do it. And you also yeah. need um, yeah. the goods. You need the goods. Yeah. What are the goods? Yes. The goods are your talent, and getting the right people around you, yeah. connecting with people who can, you know, assist in securing venues, or you know, you need to have, have you know, the goods are the network that you create. Um, and then grace. You need the grace to accept that things yeah. won't always go your way. Um, you're going to meet some people that you won't necessarily gel with and it's too late because they're already yeah. working with you, but there's always ways around that. Um, and uh, um, accept uh, humility with humility every year. Yeah. Accept uh, defeat and uh, success with the same oh. humility, uh, you know, because uh, it's nothing's yeah. real. Everything, life is a game <laughs> and, you know, it takes a while to get to a point where you just yeah. don't take everything personally. And, uh, you know, and I really believe that, like, you know, money is not real. <laughs> What's the co these concepts of, you know, what is real? Love is real. You know, connecting is real. But, you know, everything else, you know, yeah. you might as well just enjoy it. So, I mean, those are my three yeah. my three things. Yeah. Guts, goods, and grace. 3G, if you like. Uh <laughs> Sani, it's been wonderful to to have you on, and I'm sorry that we've had this this uh, d delay, but um, at least we've been able to keep going, and that's what you're talking about. You've got to have the guts, you know, and just keep going to know that it's just going to work out, and then the grace to go, whatever's meant to be heard this morning has been heard to <laughs> whomever it was meant to be for. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you just you've just got to trust you know yeah, exactly. um so tomorrow i'm gonna have the wonderful tina lee from opera circus and um, she is uh the wonderful founder of opera circus and their work has been so extensive in the sense that they've even gone out to places like uh bosnia and in that trauma and brought music to two people to heal and um, she also works very extensively with Nigel, the composer Nigel Osborne as well. So it's going to be fantastic to have her on tomorrow to share with us um, her insights and her kind of thought processes about where we go forward, how we go forward. And Sani, any any yes. final thoughts for us? Uh, yeah, look after <laughs> yourselves. Look after yourselves. You know, it's a tough time now. We all come out of it, but yeah, just look after yourselves. Look after this, and you know, do this, and you know, yeah. So, peace out, as they say. And thank you, Nadine. Gosh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for yeah, asking me to come thank on. Thank you, Sam. And, Not at all, and hopefully there'll be a day where I can interview you where there's um, a better connection for both of us. I'm also going to, because I because I know yeah. that the um, internet situation everywhere is, is getting more and more um, interrupted as more and more people are online. So um, I might have to look into a different system to run this program. Um, yeah. So I'm going to maybe have a quick look into that today or tomorrow and see if we can find another way also for people who don't have as strong 
internet connection to be able to um, also stay at the same uh, level of connection with the internet. So we will look at how that works, um, but we're always working on how to make things better and how to move things forward. Everybody, I hope you, as I said at the beginning, um, I hope you have had a wonderful um, weekend and, and a wonderful bank holiday. If you have managed to stay on with us, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Lena. Um, thank you, Susan. Thank you all, everybody, for being here. Most of and uh, most of all, uh, Sani, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. You are such an incredible man. Um, the way that you are so fluid and always so warm, your creativity doesn't just happen on stage, but it happens in your heart, it happens in your mind, it happens on the words that you put on the page, and it happens in the way that you express yourself outwardly and inwardly. And when I see you around everybody in every production or every kind of thought process that I've seen you in, you've always been a joy to everybody and a, a, a real life energy force so i want to thank you for what oh. you bring to the profession and thank you for every and for the kind of vitality and enthusiasm that you bring to everyone else thank you so much for being here namaste namaste darling take care bye bye, bye.